Everything else is disrespectful right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. If you haven't already, make sure that you get your phones out and go ahead and text a friend. www.intouchnews.com or www.intouchnews.com. We want to hear from you today. Y'all join me and give me a call. 813-444-9588. Again, it's 813-444-9588. I'm hoping you guys call me because this may be one of my last shows for a few weeks. We thought it was going to be last week, but uh, I, I got some strength this week, so I'm in the building. You're going to be here three more weeks. You think three more weeks? I don't know now. I don't know. You're going to go beyond your day. I, I am not trying to claim that. Okay? I am not trying to claim that at all. What Do you want to give the date out or you, you just kind of, you know? I mean, June 10th. June 10th. What day is that on? That's a Monday. As in this Monday. As in Monday. <laughs> After this upcoming weekend, my mama said, "My mama said that I'm not going to last." I mean, I'm sorry. My mom says that I'm going to go over the time period. Okay, <clears throat> now you heard it from me. I heard it from you. But you heard it from your mama first. I did. So, <clears throat> I, you know, my wife and I have had four children. Okay. I think I'm a pretty good judge of babies coming. And you don't think I'm ready, or you don't think the boss baby ready to come? I'm like your mama. You gonna go beyond your day? <sighs> I, 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 I want her to come whenever she's ready to come. Mm-hmm. Smooth, quick, fast, and hurry. She ain't ready. But when she come, I want to be smooth, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, I know what you want, <laughs> but she gonna make you pay. No, 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 no. I'm not claiming that. I'm not claiming that. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You ain't got to claim it. I'm just saying, Ah! you know. Well, let me put it this way. You going to know. That she coming. Oh, absolutely. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I uh, I think that's something I can't necessarily avoid or whatever, but... I will say, y'all call in and talk to me th- today because I think this 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 is going to be one of the last shows. If it's not this, if it's not this one, it probably will be the next one. But yeah, I, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to last, but I'm here. I can't say that I'm so pr- proud of myself. I've worked in enti- my entire pregnancy. Yes, you have. I've worked my entire pregnancy, which some people are not surprised. My best friend was texting me. Shout out to Chica. She just texted me today and re- text text me now. She's like, I put up, I released the new market that we're, that we're going to do our monthly market called money moving market it's going to be at 5508 um, money moving market. money moving market the goal is for ten thousand dollars to be spent in small business that day ten thousand dollars wow so we're looking for vendors if you want to be a vendor feel free to contact us you can email us at cj spencer management at gmail.com and you can come be a vendor and we're going to have people out here we want to have boss baby.com or, or bossbaby.com. <laughs> now you go to bossbaby.com, Disney might pop up. You know, I'm going to have to pay them some money for, you know, if, if I make an official website. But um, yes, we want to have, we, the goal is to have 200 some people out here and we want some money circulating. We want, we want to have $10,000 spent in small business that day. And that's really not a lot of money. Mm. When you're talking about several vendors, no. it's not it's a lot. Not. Is my door open? Uh, uh, did, did you lock the door? Well, it's open. It's open now. We got Mr. Chris from Office Space popping in and say, hey. What's up, Office Space? How you Space? doing? How you doing, Mr. Chris? We good. You know it's reality radio, so you might as well just step on up in here just for a second since we got Come you. on, Mr. Chris. So, Mr. Chris, he about to hop on the mic. One of the smoothest ex-Marines I ever met in my life, honey. Oh, yeah. Smooth. He smooth top operator. secret. He the top secret kind of guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's a couple of them around here. It is. It is. We got we got some guys in here that's, they, they, uh. But I like them. You like them? Yeah, because I, I feel safe when they're around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't have to worry about nothing. When I see Mr. Chris, I'm like, okay, yeah, we straight. Yeah, we good. So, some, <laughs> some pop up over here, honey. We I'm, I'm we hiding my office. You got an ex-Marine up in here? Ooh. Oh, shoot. Him? Hey, hello? And then, you know, you know Joe around here, too. Yeah. You know Joe's Secret Service. A- XCIA. <laughs> and then, you know, we, think, we feel like Talal is in the military. He, he, military. He, 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 he FBI. Yeah. And, you know... <laughs> He told he, he went to Angie. He went to Angie. And was like, um, did CJ tell you that she feels like I'm that I'm in the CIA or something? And she said, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> he said, where does this come from? I'm like, y'all, we, I can tell. You I can tell. It, I t- we don't trust you. Mm-mm. It's going to take a whole lot for us to trust you. <laughs> I said, I don't know what you, I, said, I told him, I said, I don't really, I don't feel like that you're trying to work on something, you know, towards us. Absolutely. But I said, just give me a heads up. If you get a if you get a bird call or something, yeah, that yeah, somebody yeah. pop off in town, but let yeah. me know. Please let us know. Mr. Yeah, Chris, yeah. please let me know. If you, let you know. If you get a call, because I know you're still connected. <laughs> you or, know he got the hook up. The White House still. He just pick up the phone, look, you know. He, he probably got, he probably he got, got a, a red phone in his office. He got a pager that they use. They don't use no phone. They still got Black a pager. Bear. Blackberry, right? <laughs> they got a Blackberry. The White House still text him. Get on, get on this plane. We got a plane for you over there. So know the sass over there by in, in the field somewhere. Ride out there. Get on this plane. <laughs> oh, my, I'm sorry. My, my bad. Come, come up to the mic. Oh. Come up to the mic. So, Mr. Chris, what? Tell tell the people what you do. Well, basically, what I am, I'm a FF and E furniture fixture and equipment installer. I run my own business. We install furniture in hotels, offices, dormitories, and uh, government facilities. Well, how long have you been doing? How long have you been doing that? Uh, we started this business five years ago. Okay. And it started off really as a hobby, but turned into a business. But I know another thing that you're also into. You're in, you're into um, not only into you're very good at it, managing government contracts. Oh yes, that right there was actually what got me into business, understanding the government and what their needs are. There's a lot of government contracts for minority businesses out there. The problem is. is us as minorities to understand how to get around the paperwork and the blueprint to get what we need. Wow. <clears throat> when you going to teach that class? Well, you know, whenever you guys are ready for me to do it. I got like three other experts that I could bring in today. Did, did you see? Did you? you a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Money. What do you call it? Money, money moving market. Okay. That, all right. That, right there. So I, was, I, was, I was just telling them that I'm going to do a money moving market out here at 5508. It's going right. to be monthly, but it's going to the first one to be July 27th. It's going to be uh, we want to have vendors out here and the goal is to spend $10,000 in small business, but it'll be a nice touch to have a, 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 a seminar, a two-hour Absolutely. seminar on, on government contract. Right. And see, the big thing for government contract is we got to get business owners to start thinking like business people. Right. Right. You know, a lot of people are in business but are not business minded or business people. They like okay. the money, but they don't like everything to go along with how Get the money. True. And see, with government contracts, you got to be on point. You got to have your SAMs. You got to have your Duns and Burn Street numbers. And you got to understand what it is to write a capability statement that reflects what your capabilities are for the government. Got you. Wow. So is a capability statement is basically a resume. Right. Of your business, what your business is capable of doing, and how it's going to be able to perform. Okay. And I think what was what's so cool about government contracting and even the industry that Mr. Chris his 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 focus is right now mm-hmm. with his business is something that you don't see a lot of people getting into but they missing out on money lots of money lots of money i mean it is millions well <clears throat> i'm missing out on some money so okay. i definitely need your course <laughs> definitely I- i'm so serious and what you're saying is true it doesn't matter what business you are in there's a job for you in the military. It is. Oh, my gosh. If you, people take time and go to fbo.gov and then just scroll the page up and down. You will see all the businesses that's out there that the government needs help. So I'll tell you right now, there's money out there. There's money out there. I mean, you got to go I, after it. Go get it. I look yes. at stuff. I mean, we're talking about the government, but if you look at even, let's say, on a smaller scale, if you look at a university, right? Yes. They still use napkins and, and, and cups. Yes, they do. And plates. Mm-hmm. Those little things, mm-hmm. right? Where they get that from? Well, see, that's the Somebody. problem. That is very true. I have a USF contract. And the thing of it is, is that we're actually being outbid by larger contracts right. from larger corporations. Wow. The problem for small business, especially minority business, is getting your foot in the door. Talk, meet, you know. Communicate with you know who you want and different people at these universities. Right. Because USF really was a great blessing for me. Okay. You know it keeps me going. It's not one of those at uh, this time a mega million dollar contract, but it's enough for me to keep people employed. Wow. Yeah, and keep wow. you know a few dollars coming in to keep people you know with mm. money in their pockets. That's comfortable. What, yes. 
And you know, because sometimes in business, that's what you, you need something to, if you have something steady, you can continue to focus on growing your business. Right. Because when you're struggling just to pay the bills, you're just like, man, I, I can't focus on the next level because I'm trying to just figure this out. So many. I see, we've been in business for 24 years. Wow. And so, mm-hmm. so we 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 see so many uh, businesses go out of business. And I, I, mean, I mean black businesses. You're correct. Just, they can't last. Well, one of the things, too, and that's what we really need another class on, how to bid correctly. How to bid correctly. A lot of times we're going and say, okay, we're going to do a job for you, but we underbid ourselves. Then we get into the process where we're doing the job, and then a guy looks over and says, I'm out of money. And you're going to go, why are you out of money? Well, we didn't bid for insurance. We didn't bid for additional men we needed. We didn't bid for this special tool we need to do the job. You know, and that's the thing that kills a lot of businesses mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So they're basically, you're saying they don't, they didn't necessarily adequately prepare for the entire thing, right? And you know, if I give a class, that's one of the things that I want to tell people about. When you bid, you got to bid your insurance costs. What is it going to cost you? Wow, it's two different burdens. You got the uh, what we call the cost burden for you as an employer, and then the uncost burden. And that's basically where you're looking at what is this man costing me an hour. To do this job we say we'll pay a guy $15 an hour but that guy actually costs you about $33 an hour when you sit down and do all your wow. calculations and they're correct so you should be bidding your job not at $15 an hour but at $33 an hour that's how these large corporations make money hmm. understanding how to bid hmm. I know I was exposed to government contracting in 2017 2017 going to 2018 and i was just like oh my god this is why did nobody tell me this you know i didn't get i didn't get the the chance and opportunity to really dive into it and and i've been on a couple contracts and i felt good about it i was like i'm at the table i went to some meetings you know so and then you know and and i I didn't even realize what this one mr chris this one i realized i tapped into someone i walked into a room Mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there minding my business you know whatever and these guys came up to me after. And they was like, when I walked in, one of the guys, of course, I was the only black girl in there. And I'm probably, they, they grandkids, right age, or they little, or they child. Right. So I walk in, and I sit, and one of the guys get up, and he lets me sit down. I'm thinking he's just being a gentleman, whatever. So I'm leaving. So one of the guys come up to me, and um, he was like, who you work for? And I was just like, well, I have a project management company, and I give him my card. Naive, right? The guy that moved the chair for me said, um, are you going to go prime on this or are you going to do subcontract? And I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> right. So I played it like this, right? I played it like this. I said, what you think I should do? Prime. Prime. He said, I think you should go prime. He was like, you're a minority woman. They're going to give you the money. He was like, "He was like, let us, let us, let us, you know, um, get on this with you. Right. <laughs> so I got in my car and I called Rick. I said, Rick. <laughs> These dudes want to jump on this with me. He's, and he was like, why? I said, because they said I'm a black woman. He was like, CJ. Hey, you know what they, You know what you call that? What? Trapping. Yeah. Exactly right. Trapping, for real. For real. I was just like, I didn't even know that I was a gold mine in there. Well, we call it another one. We call it what? We call it minority pimping. Mm, oh, minority oh, pimping. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> because what they're doing, they're looking for a minority mm-hmm. that they can use as a front, right. use that face, mm-hmm. but they're making all the money. Yeah. yeah. But you're doing all the work. All the work. All the work. See, people don't understand something. In a minority situation, you hold the cards. But a lot of us don't understand that. Yep. If you got a certification, you've got your businesses on track, you got your insurances, you're bonding, you're a gold mine. Mm-hmm. Mm. They want that face. They want your face to be the face of their business. Right. Not your business, their business. That's where we got to understand about this. I, I didn't even know. I mean, but he told me when he, when I, I'm just like, I said, Rick. And he was like, and he, so Rick is just like, that's crazy. You know, like. So you didn't, you didn't bid, did you? I bid. You did bid. Okay. I, I didn't win, but I bid by mm-hmm. myself. And, 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 and. In hindsight, just based on what Chris said, did you underbid? I probably did. And that's the reason why. The government is very smart. They know people that are going to overbid, and they know people that's going to underbid. Now, the overbidders are normally people that's going in as cocky because they, they already didn't 
Oh, the that. room. They look at the room. And then the underbidders are the new people coming in that says, I want this contract, but I really don't know where to be at. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going into, bidding yourself out of business. Wow. Mm. I'll tell you a story. The first contract I got, I went in there, I looked around the room, said, okay, and I bid it. I know I lowballed it, but that right there, I only made $550 profit after I paid everybody across Are the board. Are you serious? $550. $550. For how, how long? How, how, how For long? For seven days of work. Seven days. Once I paid all my workers, my insurance and everything, I made $550. That right there told me never again. Never again. Never again. Because not understanding how to be it will cost you that. Now imagine... I was, what, $500 away from coming out of my pocket to finish a project right. that I thought I was going to make a lot of money on mm-hmm. because numbers got to match. It's one thing we learn in this business. Numbers don't lie. Yeah. Everything else may, but numbers don't. They got to equal out to something that we all know. And you, and you got to account for it, too. <laughs> exactly You got to right. be able to account for it. I, I know that thing, it, it, it blew me. So I bid on about... I bid on that contract. I bid on about two or three other contracts. And in, 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 in government contracting, you got to have patience. It's, yes, you do. It's a whole thing. And it, it was just a world that I, I do believe that God exposed me to that for the future. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, for me to come back to. So, um, but it was just, it was, it's, I'm just and, then, and then when I was bidding, because w- the beauty of it was my team was, we, we had about 12 people on the team. You know, and and we was bidding pretty good. So I think we 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 bid we put in it was a two year contract. We put in probably about one point three million dollars for a two year contract. But once okay. you broke down the numbers, everyone was really making average salaries. You know what I'm saying? They was making right. forty thousand dollars or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we but I, but my name was on the paperwork. Yeah, I think that's what I was most proud of. And I was like, <laughs> Daddy, you know, my name is it's on this. You know, yes. like you know, because so, we were there. But it's just it's just a whole. That's a government contract, and I'm gonna encourage anybody that's out here that has a business. Like Mr. Chris said, there is something out there for you. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. Mm-hmm. There's something out there for you. I know I went to an event. Um, there's a, I don't know what it is in Ebor City, but a man said that he had a barbecue restaurant. And somehow he got connected with somebody. And he, <laughs> first he was selling his barbecue to the, to the bases. Like selling his barbecue. Right. I heard that story. And then he started having locations on the basis. Mr. Yes. yes, I heard yes. that story. Where did I hear that story? We, it was an event out there. I don't know. It yes. was something yes. they had. He opens up barbecue restaurants on these bases. Yes. Yes, you do. And you now he's selling that. to the military. Yes, and then he was selling stuff overseas. Like, Millions of dollars. dollars. Barbecue. I, barbecue. Not only that, in Afghanistan, when I was stationed in Afghanistan down in Baghdad, you have franchise. You have Popeye's Chicken. You have Hardee's. Mm-hmm. You have Green Bean. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as Starbucks. So if you have a concept and a way to put your concept into a reality, you can make money. The government is always looking for minority. <clears throat> because you got to understand something. There's so much money to set aside for us that we don't even tap in. Wow. So much. So much. When you go there, we got contracts for 8A. We got contracts for minority women. We got contracts for hub zones. We got contracts for service disabled veterans. We got contracts strictly, you know, for anybody anyway. Mm. There's contracts out there. It's just you sitting down finding out what your niche is. And getting it getting your head out of the box. There you go. Business is and I put this on my Facebook this week. Business is 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 not about what's popular or what's cute. It's about what's necessary what you can make money from right find a need fix it find a need fix it find yeah. a need and fix it there you go the office you you, you think office space right you think just furniture okay but sleep, sleep on the furniture if you want to you gotta sit somewhere when you go you everywhere to. when you go to hotel you gotta sleep somewhere you, gotta, you got to yeah when you go to work and you look at that furniture that's in your cubicle and you look at that cubicle it didn't mysteri- mysteriously Okay, all there. Right. Somebody had to put it there. Somebody. So, I mean, we have to... I, I, I love... and Of course, it's improv. We didn't even expect Mr. Chris to come in here, but it's no, a great conversation, you know, is. but it's it's true, and it's, it's we got to get out of the box, people. When you want to start a business and you want to make something happen, number one, stop talking to... I tell y'all this all the time. Stop talking to everybody about it and get your head out of the box. You might be the person to just provide pencils to the school board. How about nuts and bolts? I'm going to tell you a story about these two sisters. Okay. They started a business in Texas. 
And all they did was provide nuts and bolts to the United States Navy. That was it. Three cent, five cent nuts and bolts. Wow. Once they fulfill the order, the Navy's going like, these ladies are saving us money. So they increased their order. But what they did, they increased their price. But they gently rose their price. They didn't greatly go and say, I'm going to charge you a buck. They said, we're going to charge you 50 cent, 75 percent, 75 cent. In over 10 years, those women become multi-millionaires. Wow. Just selling nuts and bolts. Y'all better get on it. Find something. Find something. Yeah. And and fix the need. Cause and, and, and that was and the second part of that Facebook post was most of the things we spend our money on is out of necessity. You're right. We need a lot of stuff. So yeah, like Tico. As much as half of us don't like Tico, you need Tico. You're gonna find that hundred and fifty dollars from somewhere to pay them. To pay them. You're absolutely right. About you need that. them you need them lights on. You need that refrigerator you, going. You need it. AC. Right? So just like apartment complexes. It's, yeah, it's, it, it is better to buy a home. Right? But not everybody can do that, so people are going to rent. True. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. whatever it is, yeah. You're going to find that money to get to get what you need. Wow. I'm with it. Wow. And with that, th- these government contracts, man, y'all cannot, don't have your, don't, do not have your mind in a, in a box, you will be surprised. I know when I was when I was bidding on some stuff for this, um, it was some city level stuff. I mean, they was even looking for people to, to put on <laughs> events. Yes, they are entertainment. Enter- it was entertainment contracts. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just like they look they 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 looking for party planners. <laughs> they are right now on government on FBO. They're looking for hotels to put people up for a convention they have here locally. And then they're looking for caters to cater the event. Mm-hmm. Now, you wouldn't even think about that. You wouldn't. you wouldn't think that the government would have to go out and solicit it for hotels. But they are. And caters to cater the Guaranteed event. Guaranteed money. So when you think about that, not only what that is, the big deal they do at McDill, since they don't have the air show, they did a carnival. They went out and oh, see. they stopped the air show? They stopped the air show because of the cutbacks. But after the big uh, disasters we had this year from the Air Force, 10 over then up in Offit, you know, the budget was hurt real bad. So they said, we're still going to do something for the troops. So they did a big carnival. Well, a friend of mine, he does porta potties. He made $850,000 for eight days providing porta porta potties -potties. for a carnival event for McDill Air Force Base. That's going out, delivering them, servicing them, you know, picking wow. them up. Yeah. Eight days, almost a million dollars. Exactly. And now he I has a contract. Something. He has a contract now to provide porta potties for most of the events that they have there, yeah. not all of the events, <laughs> for the next five years. years. <laughs> five years. Oh, my God. Y'all better get with it. Well, I, I was I was at one of these uh, uh, Mac did, one of these military uh, um, seminars, and the guy, the buyer from Mac Deal was out there, and you know he was saying how a lot of times they are they are um, they are uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They are um, dissuading you from from really being a. They give you all the negatives, right? And so. And so a small company would think, well, shoot, what? The, well, I'm in here, I, I you, you know what I mean, right? And, and 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 they don't give all that they need to give to be a part of it. But um, we've got we ha- we need more voices like your voice we to to we need to continue to hear how we can be a part of the American dream. You can be because the thing that you got to understand something. Negative publicity sells a lot more than positive publicity. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if I keep telling you, nah, I don't want you doing this. Nah, you don't need to do that. Uh, that ain't for you over there. You got to know it's something good, but I don't want you to find it. Because right. I'm already digging in it. I'm finding all the nuggets. Yep. Yeah, I don't want you to come over here digging in my backyard. Mm-hmm. So you stay on over there where, you know, and there's nothing over there. And you got to be very, very remorseful uh, thinking about how people treat you. It's like she said earlier. Don't tell everybody you're playing. Yeah. 
You know, God's going to put you where you need to be. But the devil's also going to be there to take away what God has already got for you if you listen to him. Right. He'll pull you far and far away from that dream because he's saying that ain't for you. Wow. That's what he wants you to think. Right. And that's the thing that I always tell people. I'm where God wants me to be right about now. You know, he's what's meant for me is going to be for me. Man can't take it away from me. Can't do nothing about it. And see, that's what we have to understand something. Everybody that talks to you about something is not always the person that's going to guide you to where you need to be. Wow. That's good. That is good. Because I feel like a lot of times we could, we like connect the two, almost marry the two. You know, like, okay, Mr. Dare's going to be, he's talking to me about it, so he's got to be, you know, he's going to be the one. That may not, that's, that's good. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, I hear people say, hey, I want to do a day spa. And then I hear somebody say, well, why you want to do a day spa? You know, there's me and day spas around here in Florida. Why you want one? And I tell them in a heartbeat, do a day spa. Yours might be unique. Right. You may have something that someone else doesn't have. Right. Your ideal is only as great as whatever you can produce out of it. Right. <clears throat> yeah, you got to believe it. And to achieve it. Yes. And, and and listening to others, it's just like you said, it, right away they'll tell you what you can't do. Right. And then you believe it. Hey. I don't, I, I've always been that way. Like, I don't talk to people about what I got. By the time, even my family, you know, by the time I, by the time they know that I'm doing something, it's already done. I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm going, yes. I'm going, I'm, I'm telling them I'm doing this. Now I'm thinking about, you know, I'm doing it. L- let me give you, a, let me give you one, my story. <clears throat> so when I started the newspaper mm-hmm. 24 years ago, we sat down, <clears throat> my wife and I, and we had done about, maybe three or four uh, v- uh, um, issues. And um, so so we met with this with this white guy. He was supposed to be the, <clears throat> you know, the, the guru on publishing. Okay. So he sits down with us and we tell him what we're trying to do. And, you know, we showed him, we, we, back then we only had four pages. <clears throat> we showed him our little four-page publication. And, you know, he said, it ain't going to work. I'm telling you right now, shut it down. Wow. And I'm like, well, but you know, we were, you know, we were trying to convince him of spending all that energy. Yeah, yeah spending all the energy, and and he was just like a matter of fact. He, <laughs> and he spent like ten minutes with us, and I can still see him sliding out of the uh, cause we were in a, in a booth, sliding out of the booth, like leaving us, like with our mouths open. And do you know? Had we believed him, yep. you would literally would not be here. We would not be here. That's right. That's great. That's awesome. that's how people are. And that's an awesome testimony. Yeah. Of someone that did not want you to achieve your goal. Yeah. They want you to follow your dream. True. So true. And it was a dream because did I tell you about? Let me, the reason I started the newspaper was I woke gotta up. Turn this back around. <laughs> I woke up in the Y'all got to see OG Look. down here to get excited. I woke up in the middle of the night in a sweat. I literally sat up and Tammy said, what's wrong? And I told her that I, had, I dreamed I had a Sunday newspaper. And, 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 I, and also I told her that I had dreamed um, – that it was uh, that I had struggled to get the paper, but then all of a sudden it was just successful. And um, about uh, that's when Tammy was working for the radio station. So about three weeks later, <clears throat> she calls me and says, "This guy is in town and he wants to do a newspaper. He wanted to do a newspaper with her because she was Tampa Bay Tammy." Tammy. Tammy. And Tammy said, "Well." I don't want to do a newspaper, but call my husband. And that's how we got that newspaper started. Wow. Isn't that something? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It was a dream. And what you said, you know, God God will put you exactly where you need to be. Same thing. Now, now, now but, but, but I, I don't know if y'all heard me. I dreamed I had Sunday. a Sunday, Sunday newspaper. newspaper. Okay. There you go. So you, you feel like you ain't there yet. But you're going that way. You're going there. Mm-hmm. You're going that way because you already laid the foundation to get to that next level. Absolutely. And this is what we have to remember when when it comes to moments like that because we all know that it gets tough. 
I believe that God will give us a snippet of, of, of where we're going to be. Like, I've seen my destination. Mm. I've seen it. If you see it, you can achieve it. I can it. achieve it. That's right. Who said that? Oh, my, I feel like I heard that. I feel like it's a, 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 a black Jesse people. Jackson, yes. somebody. somebody yeah. said it. Hell but anyway, oh, somebody. Jesse Jackson. Okay, Reverend yeah. Jesse Jackson. That's so, one of his. Um, but I've seen, like, there's a there's a there's a scene in my that God has shown me. I'm walking around my corporate office, and the crazy part is, I had a baby in my hand. Mm. Oh, okay. Well. Well, you know you got. Well, no, you already got a corporate office. I mean, right. 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 You know, so, there ain't no really big corporate office. It's not. But it's yours. It's mine. Yeah, I, it's I have, I have this. I have the now, in, in the dream. I, the, the 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 office is a little bit. It's it's, it's in a building. I can I can see I can see you some see of the out. city. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I got my team and we're. Oh, and, you know what that means? What? That's gonna be your third baby. I what? told you. Oh, gonna start oh dropping. I don't know about all I, that. I already told you. <laughs> he said, I told I you. I, there you go. I told you. That's a magical number. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> let me finish my story. <laughs> Did you see this great Listen, corporate office? I see, I, I, this corporate office, and, I, and I, there's a group of people in there, right? And they're giving me reports. They're giving me reports, and I'm walking around and I'm, I'm with the baby. Walking around with the baby, and I'm and I'm saying, okay, so and so, what's up with this project? So and so, what's up with this business? So and so, okay. And I'm and I'm talking. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. I don't have on any shoes because that's just that's the, that's how that's I work shoes. best. <laughs> when I don't have shoes on, but. I'm in my element, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And everyone is doing their thing, is operating, the businesses are flourishing. I've seen that. You've seen it. This is the, it's yeah. done. So when I have those moments, I'm just like, he already showed me. I already know. I already know. Well, I, I, let me tell you this. I, if you see it, I, I've seen it because I see how you operate. Right. Yes. That's, that's who you are. That is exactly how you operate. I can see you in a 37-story building on the 37th floor, mm -hmm. kicking ass and taking names. She's a go-getter. I've been watching her. Absolutely. This girl we doesn't got Rick give up. D in Rick the D house, stepped in the building. We got Rick D in the house. Yes, I mean, you know, if you've seen that, you said the Sunday paper, you you you, you got the paper, but we got to get to Sunday. Got to get to Sunday. But, I mean, like I said, I've seen that vision, and so, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure... I will say this: When I get to that point, I'm trying to get some of this um, contract money. Oh, that Mister that Mister Chris be talking about. Absolutely. My my goal is my goal is 2020. I need to be having to sit down with him, saying, "Okay, what 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 can you put me on? I'm trying to get about a hundred thousand out of a project. You you want to get him in 2019? That's right. Yeah, okay, get him in 2019, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we can be him. yeah, fall of 2019. Okay. Okay. See, right about now, in another couple months, it's gonna be real busy. Yeah, July one. No, October one. October one. The new physical year. So by July the first, like he said, is that that's when everything's gonna hit the table. That's when you start sending out your your uh, proposals. That's right, Mr. Chris, we need this class so we can get this money. I'm always available. I don't mind sitting down talking with you. So Rick, D, Mr. Chris is a he, he has an office um, furniture and business, but he's a guru for gov government contracts. Guru. Guru. Meaning. Like he know how to get that paper. <laughs> What's the definition of guru? G guru. You know I'm gonna Google it, right? I thought it yeah. was an expert. Uh, We're gonna Google it, but he. I, I just know. I know it's very important to me that you know pretty much. Know what you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. know what you know. Right, stay in your lane. Don't try to get. And that's what I tell everybody. Once you get good at something, be good at that. Right. Because you can't be good at a multiple things and oh, stand the grind. Okay. Oh, okay. So here we go, y'all. So it's three, got, It's an A B C. I'm gonna go with C first. A person with knowledge or expertise. Perfect. B is one who is acknowledged leader or chief proponent, and then the main one is a teacher, and especially intellectual guide <laughs> in matters of fundamental concern. So teacher. A yeah. guru is a professional teacher, almost <clears throat> someone who, okay. So I, I got it. What were you finna say? I've been thinking about that, well, what someone said to you all week. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was just going to uh -huh. say. So you say you got to focus. Say that one more time for me, Chris, what you just said. You got to focus on one thing. You got to be focused. No, you got to stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Be good at that and be focused on that and not try to do multiple things. So is that almost like, is that saying you can't own multiple businesses? It says you can own multiple businesses, but a lot of people try to do too much. Right. And they are not good at anything. Uh, 
And that's where you see a lot of people. It's nothing wrong with being having multiple business, being mm-hmm. invested in multiple business. But the problem is, is if you can't understand what your business is doing or how it's making you money, mm-hmm. then you're losing money. Mm-hmm. You know, we got people that put money here. It's like stocks. Let's take that as an example. Okay. How many minorities understand the stock market? None. How many of them do Quite it because their buddy said, hey, you need to invest in this. So, okay, I'm going to put $25 because he made $100, mm-hmm. but not knowing what he really invested right, into. Right, right. So that's what you got to look at business. If I'm going to put my money into this business, I got to understand this business. True. I got to see what my rate of return is going to be for this business. I can't own a car wash and don't know what it's going to cost me to run that car wash. Mm-hmm. I can't own a automobile company and not know how much it costs to own a automobile, how much insurance I need, and all the tax that go with that. But I'm a, I'm a half owner in a Honda dealership. Mm. <laughs> or I'm half owner in a barbecue place, and I don't even know how to make barbecue. Ah, see, because I just had a little experience that um, that basically I got my my hands in too many barrels. I got you know I got a lot of things to focus on. I'm I'm aiming at too many targets at once. I can believe that. <laughs> you know, so for him saying that, and I'm trying to, and like I got a lot of businesses. If we want to put them in, you know, say so. Now that he just said that, now I get to figure out what my aim is and all the businesses to make them work. Like, right. what's my main focus that I can spread to all of them at once? But I know what it is now. You do? Yeah. And what is that, my ass? I'm the sales guy. I'm the marketer. You are. There you go. You know what I'm saying? I'm the... Absolutely. I'm the business. Straight Being on up. the ground. Uh, I'm straight up and down. Doesn't matter how good your business is, if you can't sell the product, right. it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You got it. You're as only as strong as your sales team. I tell people that all the time. When I when we when they say when they see the stuff, some of the stuff that we have going on, I'm like, look, I I might figure some stuff. I say, but Rick, Rick gonna be on the on the ground with the people. He, yeah, he gonna sell I mean, it. He'll sell it to you know. Right, right, the right. thing is, like, it's it's a lot, you know, handling more than one business because you can make money in your other business. You can make a decent amount, but now you gotta recycle the funds oh, oh, to God. another business. To another business. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like. Am I even making money? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? So some <laughs> Yes I'm very true, sir. You know, so sometimes it gets it gets difficult and try to and like understanding like is this the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't do what you want with it for your personal use. True. You know, right. yes. you know what I'm saying? True. The material things of life, but everything else is taken care of. You know, so it just be like, hey, am I am I really successful? But you have to. I think you do have to let yourself know that if you're able to manage your bills and you can, you know, what I'm saying you're still eating and you're taking care of the necessities and your needs, then then you are successful. Like material things don't make you successful. Not at all. Because no. it makes you debt. Right. Makes you debt. Th- but material things makes you debt. I know when when Rick and I had a conversation and even what shooting at a lot of darts and then <coughs> things that you said. I think what I've learned is I, I have to be okay with stepping away from my business sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've I've established, ever since I was 22, I've established several businesses. And people are like, well, what happened to this one? What happened to this one? And if, I used to be ashamed to say, ah, oh, I can't focus on it. But I have to be mature enough to say, I can't do that right now. Can't right, do, right, right, I can't right. do it right now. But I'll pick it back up. You know, I'll pick it back up if, mm-hmm. if the time is right, just like with mm-hmm. the government right. contract. And, hey, I was exposed to it. I, I did some things with it. I got to sit it down right now. I know my focus right now is A and B. I can, I can do these two. Absolutely, right, right, you know, right. and I'm gonna do them well, and I'm gonna focus on it. But you got to be able to so say, you learn how to throw that ball into the juggle. Yeah, yeah, and so it you know, works. Or, or until this right here is operating on, it don't need me to babysit. Right, right, and even right. if you got A and B, and and you, and you ain't handling that, you got to drop B or yeah. A, a, right? Something, whatever's working. So I had to get to that point, mm-hmm. and that probably was late last year. I was like, okay, I, it's okay for me to say that. Hey, I can't, I can't focus on it. Mm. If it's, not, you're gonna be failing. Yeah. I had the same conversation with a good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And then she realized you're right. Okay. Because basically what it is is, let's say, for instance, like you said, A is making great money. Right. And you said, okay, what I need to do with this money on there? Because I have, a, you know, I got to recycle the money in there. Right. Then you go to B. And then B is not doing so well. Right. So now you got to keep B going because most of the time it's our pride. Mm-hmm. It's more than anything mm-hmm. won't let us drop that. So we're taking money from A to make B work. Right. But we're forgetting a was a butter. Yeah. 
You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now we're taking so much from it. Mm-hmm. Now it's starting to it's starting to deteriorate. Right. So now you got A deteriorate, then you got B, B deteriorating. Mm. So then you got to ask yourself, what is more important? Right. What's more important? Wow. A has got me where I need to be. Mm-hmm. B was just something I was trying to do. Right. Mm. So now you got to go back to what, well, once again, you got to stay in your lane and know what you know and do what you do. Yeah. So you let that B drop off and you go back to that A. It's kind of like you said. You tried it, but it wasn't for you or it wasn't your time. Right, right. And that's funny, yeah. I got a close friend of mine, you know, who always say, they say, Rick, it ain't your turn yet. Yeah. Like, we might be riding, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we see a nice vehicle next to us that we just ain't got into yet. He'd be like, it ain't your turn yet. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So, th- yeah, things come to you. Just be patient and wait. I definitely need to hear that. And I, I know our listeners need to hear that because, yeah. you know, we deal with a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, and the world is becoming, you know, a big you know, business market for, you know, personal, for people on their own, you know, being entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rest in peace to the late Nipsey, but I seen a video where he said that, that all the big businesses are going to crash and all the small guys are coming up. And that's basically what, you know, everything is turning into. You know, if you pay attention, like like Uber is a prime example of that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, a small guy knocked out a heavy competitor. And you still doing saying? it. Still yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Airbnb. Don't small, even own a house. Small business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Booming. Like, you don't even have to own a house to have an Airbnb. You can rent an apartment no. in Airbnb if you want to. Now, an Airbnb <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Don't, what, technically, don't even own houses. No, yeah. they don't. They use you yeah. to make money. Once again, they're using what you have yep. to make money. Yeah. And see, that's what it is. It's like you're saying. And one thing that I agree with what you're saying mm-hmm. that I like about it was, look at Tampa. Okay. Tampa is the fourth largest growing city in the United States. I believe that. If you look at our traffic, you look at the building. Look at the Talk to me. And you look at everything that's going on. Look up. We are growing faster than Atlanta, Georgia right now. This is what wow. I tell you. You know what I tell when people? When you go to a small town, when I, I'm starting to cut you off. No, but when you go to a small town and you look at the airport, That'll tell you how the city's going to grow. Right. We've got almost a $100 billion project going right now at right the airport. Now. Yep. Our airport's going to be big as Orlando. <coughs> it's going to be bigger than Orlando. Man, yeah, because Tampa's... The yeah. big O? The big O. Yes. It's going to be bigger than that. That's this, right. much, this is what I'm going to tell you, Mr. Dale. Just start looking up. Yes. You got to start looking to the sky because you're going to start seeing yes. buildings. You start seeing advertisement higher than you know use. Yes. That's that's what I, I first noticed. And my and I live right by the Hard Rock, so that's my <laughs> that's my first prime example. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it used to be low. Mm-hmm. Now it's moving. Higher, now higher. it's getting higher up. Condos going straight up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like Tampa is on the market right now. It is definitely for rising. Think about it. Hard Rock used to be the end of Tampa. Right. That was considered wow. the rural area. It was too yeah. far to drive. Right. Now look at I ain't going way over there. But now it's almost <laughs> pretty <laughs> much the middle of Tampa. But you, sure you, but you know what's so crazy? And, and, and that's funny that you say that because in a lot of major cities, the casinos are farther. Yes. Like, they're not even in the city. Right. They're like, you know, 15, 20 miles out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's regular for them to drive. So for someone that's, that lets you know that the difference is changing, like, oh, man, the casino right there. Like, that's that ain't far. Wow. Speaking of the casino, this is a little bit off but not. Wawa, mm-hmm. I, I don't know who 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 was on their team to know where to put these Wawas at. Right. They, ain't they don't play no game. And they pop up everywhere Well, now. see, Wawa was up north. Right. You would yep. see those in Ohio. Mm-hmm. You know, that area, Ohio, you see it in the uh, – Missouri, Indiana. Was it the same uh, same uh, business model? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it mainly they, they, they were mainly owned, yeah they're family owned and they mainly catered to truckers at first. Okay. And then that's the reason that Delhi came in there. You mm-hmm. know, a trucker come in when he's something to do it. Always. And then they noticed that they started to see local people come in and do that. Right. My and Pa needed some breakfast or they were running late. Right. They get the kids something. Mm-hmm. What they did is they brought that concept. To, you know, they started doing Atlanta and now it's here. Mm-hmm. Do you realize the Wawa right there on Orient Road, in Hillsborough and Orient Road, is the number one producing Wawa in what? In the state of Florida. Wow. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, I believe it. I, I went in there and I said, wow. I asked, I, said, I went in and I said, this has to be a multi-million dollar store. It is. I don't care what time you go to that Wawa. It is full. 
it is full. You waiting Crowded. to go to the gas station. Always. Waiting to get you the pump. Always. You waiting to Every get your time. soda. I ain't never you thought about to... it like that, but yes. you're right. It's not ever, ever a time that parking lot empty. Ever. It and did. I'm talking about the parking lot. It's not in front of the store. We're talking <laughs> about on the side. Yeah. No, no. Pump. You yes. even have a hard time finding a seat outside at one yeah. of them little tables. To sit down if you don't want to drive or you need to stretch. And not even, you know what was really amazing? And that is not a truck stop. It's not. And people really go there to hang out, though. Yes. <laughs> that's the thing. That's right. Yes. They go there to hang out. They be there hanging out, having lunch, mm. oh, business yeah. meetings. Yeah. Right at the Wawa. Right at the Wawa. Wi-Fi, the, all that. Yep. The, the problem is, is that they had to stop and start towing vehicles because people were parking there yeah. to go to the casino. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the guy originally thought about it. He said, you know what? We ought to do like that mobile. We need to start renting out space. Mm-hmm. And then they're going like, if we run out space, then where were our customers? Yeah. Right, then we right. run away too our many customers. customers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our customer volume outweighs what a parked vehicle is going to yeah. pay me. Because people will get annoyed if they're like, man, that Wawa too party. We can't even go yeah, to them. Man, that Wawa is, I, like I said, that, that right there. And, and they, they Wawa, they, they pick a lot of good places like that. And, and, and listen, they're, uh, the brand is a meeting spot. People will say, well, meet me at that Wawa. Yep. Yes. Yep. They've perfected that experience. Yes. I love going to Wawa for the experience. <laughs> they, they they found their lane. I mean, where you where else would you want to go? Like on the on the on the fact of a like, don't call it a gas station because they'll. It's not. You know the CEO it's a told me that fun when I when I was at Enterprise, I worked at Enterprise, and he came. They they were that's when they just was in Tampa, right? 20, 2013. So uh-huh. I was like, what are you here for? He was like, hey, have you ever heard of Wawa? I was like, oh yeah, the new gas station. He said, do not call it a gas station. It's an experience, and we just sell gas. Yes. So he said, have you been to one? And I was like, no, sir. And he it's said, yeah, don't call it a gas station. It's an experience. We just sell, sell gas. It's a family, family fun center. And it is family fun. Yeah. They wow. don't, he let they me not know. like, yeah, because they don't, I don't know. So I'm trying to think what they don't sell, but they don't sell everything in the store. Like I'm, I'm trying to think what particular, <laughs> what particular oh, that they don't sell. Yeah, they don't, they don't sell like you know, they don't sell t-shirts. They're not, you know, they're not like a regular convenience store. Like every, um, in, I've gone in there for before. Yeah, uh, you see, you see, and it's some a regular uh, gas station. station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be a number of things. Oh, they don't have microwaves. Is it microwaves? Yeah, no, yeah, they don't. Nope. They don't have no, microwaves. No, nope. nope. yeah. they don't. And it was nope. something else. It's twice I've been in there where and I thought they, got they should have had it. They, they didn't. Huh? They got free ice. Free, free ice. ice. And free air. Yeah. Yep. And, and free, free air. air. They started that concept and they coined it. Mm-hmm. Coined free it. Air. And then, and then the, 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 I love the deals. All the little campaigns they be having. Like the, the, the Hoagie Fest. People mm. look forward to that. Okay, I'm oh, going. Yeah, and they, they, they figured it out. They do, Hoagie do, Fest. Do y'all know one other thing about Wawa? What? They don't have... Um, they don't have a policy to where, like, they chase people out of their store if they steal it. There's, there's like a policy, like, oh yeah, it's almost like it's almost just like honesty. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't know exactly how you how you you know put it in words the right way, but if you steal from the store, they're not ever going to chase you or like confront you about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, like certain stores, like the way they're set up, yeah, you yeah. almost got to pass somebody or they can stop you or whatever. But it's kind of like it's it's. The atmosphere is free, so it's kind of like okay, yeah. well we we hope we hope you don't steal. But we they hope, will yeah. say something to you yeah. in a in a way because I've you know excuse my friends, but I've been with people who stole yeah. and been confronted. Wow. But it's not like they're trying to they won't like charge you, yeah, but they they're gonna let you know. Hey, well we know don't what do you're that doing. again. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but it almost make you mad. You see somebody sitting from Wawa. I was like, really? Come on. That's so sweet. Yeah, it's yeah, like, come on. Like, it was a dollar drink. Like, it was a dollar like fountain drink. It's like stealing from your grandma, you know? You know, also real sweet. I, I don't know why. I'm just off topic, but a person who was just re- was real sweet to me, and like, and please pause, no homo, but Jay-Z. Yes. I feel like he's just like. A nice guy. A good guy. Just like, you know, like your yeah, grandma, like every time they see him, man, he's so sweet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I, I just seen him, I'm just thinking about him when he was with Oprah walking through his neighborhood and his projects. I know in my mind, Oprah told him, man, you're such a sweet guy. Right. And the only reason I really say this, because I seen him, the actually, I think it's, it's a, um, a meme where they got him and Beyonce sitting down at the game, and it's a girl talking to Jay-Z. 
You know, I, I saw that. Crazy. But this is crazy. Like, who waves like this? Right? He he was was like, hey, y'all. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason. When oh, I see the yeah. wave with his two hands, oh, I'm like, I didn't man, see that. He's a sweet I, guy. I'll show you the video. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, shout out to Jay Z because he is now a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, he, he is. is a billionaire. Oh, he is. He's, he's a billionaire is. by himself. By, by himself. himself. He, no, he's a billionaire in the record books. Yeah. yeah. For real. He don't just become a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the man's right. been a billionaire. He's man. <laughs> he's been doing this thing a long time. Yeah, you don't know how. He's perfected. You know what I mean? But, I, his lane. but why they say? What, I mean, they ain't want to give Diddy the billionaire mark. You, P you, Diddy, you feel like he's a billionaire too? I don't think he's quite there. I think he's about eight hundred fifty million. Man, yeah. I don't think he got now, that billion. Now, what was surprising yet. to me was that when you when you said the 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 the, the small guys are coming up, when I looked into where his money was, Jay Z invested in Uber. Yes, him and Beyonce. They invested in Uber. Both of course. have separate stock, but they're one of the biggest investments investors in Uber. In Uber. Yes. And what it was is Beyonce, well, I know with her, she did a performance for them. Yes. And she, they, instead of them paying her, she said, no, 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 no. Give me X amount of stocks in your business. This is mm. years ago. Mm. Game. But the reason, really? Another reason why I say that about him, I mean, just think about all the good stuff that he's done that you won't even know. Right. Lil Wayne True. took care of his IRS bill. That's such a sweet thing. Yeah. Like, I just feel like my grandma would just be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Guy. He was Meek, raised right. Meek Mills. Pay for his legal, bond. Yeah. Yes. Legal people. You know what I'm saying? He, he, when we was talking about like heroes in our community, he is a hero in African American society. And he's quiet about it. And that's yeah. what I like about and, it. And, yeah. that's the, and that's why he's so dangerous. Everybody ain't got to know. Everybody that's why he got it. That's why he's so dangerous. You know what I'm saying? This show has been amazing today. Good. Great. Yes, it I has. Think, I, think, I think, I mean, I, I know we're about to wrap up soon, but I want to recap some of the stuff we went over. Oh, okay. please do. Yeah. So, um, don't be afraid to step out of the box because we started off by talking about Mr. Chris, how he, his one of his main businesses right now is providing furniture. How did you start? I started as a hobby. My father did this for many years. He was a mover. Uh. And we did this and we helped him out. And I was like, Dad, I'm not going to be a mover. I'm going to the Marine Corps. Right. So I left. But, you know, I would go home and help him out. And it was just a hobby, just doing it. Mm -hmm. And then when I retired, I said, okay, I got to do something. Right. And I just sit here and I just started doing it. Hey, so just start doing it. Start doing you it. You got to start something. somewhere. Find yes. something. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. And do it. Find a need and you fix it. Stay in your lane. Stick to it. Stick to it. You, you don't have to, you know, shoot at so many darts. Yep. And you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. I thank you guys for listening to today. Mr. Chris, we appreciate you. Hey, you thank, you. thank you for inviting in. me. I appreciate thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you. We need you in the building. Thank you. We thank you guys for listening in. Hopefully, you know, I may or may not be here next week, but the show will go on. This is Trap Talk Radio. We'll catch you guys next week. Trap Talk Radio.